Hello, everyone. Welcome. And thank you so much for joining us tonight for this very special virtual edition of our annual meeting. I'm Claire McDermott, the Director of Marketing and Events, and I'll be the MC this night this evening. We have a great night lined up, but before we get started, we just wanted to go over a couple quick housekeeping items. So for the best viewing tonight, we suggest putting your screen in speaker, speaker view. There's a little box in the upper right hand corner of your Zoom screen where you can change your view settings to speaker view. Also, we'll be using the chat feature throughout the evening to share resources for the member vote on our board slate. So to access that chat, you can click the chat bubble icon at the bottom of your screen. All right, so that's all of our housekeeping for tonight. So let's get started. We wanted to first thank our event sponsors for tonight, Divi and HNTV. Their support helps make our work possible and allows us to put on awesome events like this for our members and our supporters. HNTV Corporation is a national employee owned infrastructure firm with more than 106 years of service. Professionals nationwide deliver a full range of infrastructure related services, including award winning planning, design, program and construction management. And of course, Divi is Chicagoland's bike share service that we know and love. Thank you again to Divi and HNTV for your support of this event. So every year, our annual meeting is an opportunity to thank and to celebrate the people that are the lifeblood of Active Trans, our members and volunteers. It is our pleasure again to be able to recognize some of our volunteers who've gone above and beyond this past year to create change in their communities. Tonight, we'll have three volunteers we like to recognize. And I'm gonna hand it over to our advocacy manager, Julia, to introduce the first two awardees. Hi, my name is Julia Gersomenko, and I'm an advocacy manager at the Active Transportation Alliance, and I'm here this evening to present the two City Advocate of the Year awards. First up, we have Romina Castillo of Muse Community and Design. I first met Romina when I started working at the Active Transportation Alliance in June of 2017. She was in the midst of leading the Slow Roll Chicago summer community bike ride season, and she impressed me as being well connected to communities around the city, genuine and warm. Fast forward to today when Bermina still wears many hats and continues to earn the respect and admiration of everyone she works with. Romina, you're a fantastic facilitator, a fierce community advocate, and an inspiring innovator in the field of urban planning. From your work on the West Side Vision Zero plan to citywide Divi expansion to connecting residents to resources, all of Chicago is better off for having you be a leader in this space. Thank you, Romina. Cheers to you for being one of our City Advocates of the Year. Not to be outdone, I would also like to acknowledge Fatal Perkins of Think Outside the Block and Teamwork Englewood. I first met Fatal at an Englewood Quality of Life Plan Public Safety Task Force meeting in 2018. There I learned about the nonprofit he founded, Think Outside the Block, to uplift youth in Englewood. I also heard about his plan for a community bike ride called Roland Peace, and I knew I had to check it out. If you haven't been to a Roland Peace ride in Englewood yet, please, I encourage you to check out the next one. Each time I've attended, they've been radical community gatherings of joy, mutual aid, strength, and resilience. From your role as community representative on the Mayor's Bicycle Advisory Council to continuing to organize countless positive community events, giveaways, reflection spaces, to the other violence prevention work you do with Teamwork Englewood, we say thank you for your hard work and visionary leadership. Cheers to you, Fatal, for being our City Advocate of the Year. Hello, Active Trans team, partners, volunteers, allies, advocates, and everyone who's joining today. This recognition truly means a lot to me, especially coming from Active Trans. I've always looked up to this organization as an example of committed and talented advocates. I'm honored and thankful for being awarded CD Advocate of the Year. And I would like to congratulate Patel, my cool award recipient for the incredible work he's leading in Englewood. Patel has already made his mark in Chicago and I know he'll continue changing and improving the lives of everyone who comes in contact with him. He is a definition of a true rock star. 
2020 has been challenging in many ways, but collaborating and supporting dedicated community partners across the city has kept me going for the last months. I know we're far from living in a city where everyone feels safe, biking, walking, rolling, where there are zero crashes and where infrastructure investment is allocated equitably. But the collective power that you all bring to this work makes me get up every morning and push forward. I'm humbled by the community leaders that I've worked with and I'm currently working with. Your vision is my priority. And I promise that I'll continue working hard to support your efforts and projects. The work continues and it is my pleasure doing this work with you in a city that I love so much. Thank you all and be safe. Wait, hold up. Hi, I'm good now. You sure? Okay, cool. Oh, uh, no, seriously. Um, I trust everyone is doing well. I hope everyone out there is staying safe. I'm super excited um, about receiving this award. It's an honor. Like, there's so many people in the city doing so much great work. Um, it's, it's a real good feeling to know that I was chosen to receive this award. Um, just thinking about all of the, the, the work that I've been a part of um, and all the work that I'm doing, um, to know that there's someone somewhere paying attention um, and that wants to celebrate me and appreciates those efforts. Um, it's a, it's an amazing feeling. Um, I want to say like my, the, just thinking about out of, out of all the work, everything that I've done with MBAC, shout out to MBAC, um, me leading, um, and coordinating, um, an initiative to develop a community-based strategy to reduce violence at in Inglewood, um, funded by the Department of Justice, um, at Teamwork Inglewood, and shout out to Teamwork Inglewood, um, the work that I've done leading the Inglewood Public Safety Task Force, and of course, um, I think outside the block, um, shout out to Liana. Um, my most, the most, the thing that I'm most proud of, I'm going to say is, is, is the work and what's really happened with Rolling Peace. To know that we're now in just six bike rides. We have a thousand plus participants that come to what's arguably the worst, most violent community in the city of Chicago. Um, Regardless of all of the things that divide us and separate us as people, um, when you think about the um, the different walks of life, the the different ethnic backgrounds, the the regardless of whatever your tax bracket is, um, what color you are, what age you are, what shape you are, uh, if you out of shape. <laughs> the thing that Road Peace provides is this sense of community and unity and everybody coming together and just having an amazing time and getting to exercise and getting to build and getting to learn each other. And 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 for those um, 90 minutes, People just get to enjoy people and all of those other things don't even matter. And that's something that I'm proud of. Um, and it's it's a, a, a real start. And all of the other things that we have to, that we're fighting to fix. And so with that being said, I'll just end with um, saying thank you. Um, shout out to Julia. I appreciate you, all of the work that you're doing um, over at Active Trans. 
uh, you've been super supportive of me and everything that I'm doing and everything that I've been a part of since the first day I met you. And I want to say thank you. Um, shout out to Romina. You're more than deserving of the City Advocate of the Year Award. And you're an amazing human being. I want to say thank you for making sure I was a part of MBAC. Shout out to Inglewood. Um, this has been a rough year for me. Um, and I really want to, I really want to dedicate this, this award to my daughter, uh, Faber. It's for you, Faber. Daddy loves you. Um, thank you, Active Trans. Hi everyone. This year we wanted to honor Morton Sinclair for our Suburban Advocate of the Year Award for his dedication and hard work to improve walking and biking in the city of Des Plaines. I've had the pleasure of working with Morton over the last few years now through our Bike Walk Every Town program and I've learned so much from him. He's passionate, he brings kindness, wisdom, and commitment to his work. He's the president of the Des Plaines Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee and a chapter leader for the Citizens Climate Lobby. He'll be moving next year and we'll miss him terribly, but he's truly helped Des Plaines make huge progress over the years. He's an amazing advocate and we wanted to recognize him for helping make our region a better place to live. Hi, Active Transportation Alliance. I'm Wharton Sinclair from Des Plaines. First, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this kind acknowledgement of the advocacy work that I've done along with my colleagues in the Des Plaines Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee since we formed in 2013. Uh, we formed actually as an outgrowth of a plan for Des Plaines that was done by Active Transportation Alliance back in 2011 uh, and people involved such as Barb Cornu and Heather Shady uh, we'll probably remember that uh, that work and we thank you for that because I don't think we would exist without it. Uh, Active Transportation Alliance provides a great uh, service by tying together a lot of suburban, disparate suburban groups that can learn a lot from what, the, you know, what activities are happening elsewhere and also get best practices and, uh, or, and education. Um, Maggie Cherwinski in recent years has been a huge help with all of that. Um, here in Des Plaines, uh, the en Engineering and Public Works Department, and particularly Derek Peebles, uh, who's actually no longer with the city, but for years did a lot of great work helping us to get um, uh, infrastructure projects for bikes and pedestrians uh, into the planning and execution stages as well as the city council that's been really, um, really supportive as well. So we haven't had a, a confrontational uh, experience here, but really a collaborative experience. I think that's actually the best of all possible worlds, if you can do it. So I see great things in your future. Uh, I will be moving on to New Hampshire in the middle of next year uh, to be closer to family. Um, but I know that, that your great work is going to continue and uh, hopefully with uh, a huge uh, successes. I, I, I am very confident of that. And I thank you again for the acknowledgement and keep up the fantastic work. Oh, what uh, awesome and inspiring leaders. Romina, Fatal, Wharton, and welcome to the new board members, Lakeisha and Julie. It truly does take a village to make our cities and towns equitable and thriving. There's no question that this year has been hard on so many levels, but through it all, I continue to be so grateful to work every day with such extraordinary people, as well as the Active Trans staff and board and partners and you all. Uh, what I love about this work is the people we work with are the embodiment of committed, fired up, persistent, smart, visionary, um, and at times realistic when needed. We're all here tonight, not because we are so excited to be in another Zoom meeting, but because we believe in the promise of active transportation, of walking, biking, and rolling. The impacts are profound for the climate, for our health, for our economic strength, for our quality of life. 
as we've navigated this pandemic, the role of active transportation has been elevated in new ways and it faces new challenges as well as some of our old ones. Um, so I want to share a little bit about what we've learned and what we've done. So what have we learned? First, we have heard and already knew, but it's been reinforced that loud and clear public transit's a lifeline. Over a quarter of Chicago households don't have cars and they shouldn't need one. Trains and buses serve as our crucial connector to the things we need and the places we need to go, our jobs, our stores, medical doctors, and more. But we have more work to do, a lot more work to do in securing funds to make sure our region's transit system can function in the way it should. Secondly, we've experienced a boom in walking and biking, which provides such a hopeful glimpse into a transformed future for our streets and our health and our climate. Unfortunately, and you heard some of this from our partners, we have a ways to go for this to become a reality in our region. Many people can't and don't bike due to poorly designed and unsafe streets. We must prioritize people over our vehicles so we all can walk and bike and be on our streets without fear of death or injury. And third, intersecting with these transit and cycling and pedestrian experiences are the ways the underlying racial and economic inequities in our region's transportation networks have become intensified by the pandemic. This is especially acutely felt by our essential workers who are disproportionately Black and Latinx. Addressing these inequities has been and will be the focus across our advocacy. It's at times like these that the urgency to address the gaps in transportation comes into sharp focus. I'll share just a few of the ways our collective advocacy throughout the year resulted in some crucial victories. The impact we've made would not have been possible without champions like you. Our action alerts have been off the charts this year. We are so proud of you for speaking out and speaking out again and again on really important things. So I'm gonna share just a mere 10 examples of what we've accomplished together in 2020. Throughout the pandemic, we have fought hard to keep our region's buses and trains moving and safe. Our first five successes reflect this. First, we can continue to fight for the highest levels of COVID safety on transit. We've partnered with transit operators to persuade CTA and PACE and Metra to look at their boarding procedures, to look at um, PPE for drivers, we have provided social distancing guidance with our public health agencies, and we're seeking transparency in airflow circulation and other procedures to help keep everybody safe while riding. Secondly, with our partners, we took our fight to DC and won $1.6 billion in federal relief for our transit agencies, who, let's be honest, are in a financial crisis because of the significantly reduced ridership due to the pandemic. The advocacy on this continues. You're gonna hear more from that uh, from us tonight and uh, tomorrow and the next day. Third, we responded immediately to the unprecedented transit shutdowns in May and August that left many stranded. And we're working fervently to ensure that CTA, PACE, Metro Divi remain in operation during periods of unrest. Our transit is a public good and it must remain open and reliable. Fourth, at last, dedicated bus lanes. Um, this fall, CTA announced some dedicated bus lanes um, on the city's busiest routes that were busy pre-COVID and have remained consistently busy, busy through the pandemic. This has been one of our top priorities and we're thankful to CDOT, CTA, and the mayor. Now we wanna see if we can get some more routes added. This is a really important part of our COVID response. Fifth, um, the South Cook Fair Transit Pilot is on the cusp of launching. It's intended to make transit more affordable for the South suburbs where residents are paying a disproportionate amount of their transportation. We're thankful to Cook County and Metro and Pace for seeing this through in this hard time and for advocates for getting this off the ground. Now moving on to walking and biking. Together, we have fought to make it safer and easier to walk and ride where we wanna go and where we need to go. I'm gonna give you our top five there. 
First, we secured and implemented significant new money for active transportation. You may recall that last year we won a milestone victory. For the first time ever, Illinois capital program includes dedicated, keyword dedicated, funding for walking and biking. And this year, over 105 million of those dollars were made available to communities across the state. We helped them prepare great projects and provided in-depth support to about 15 low resource communities in our region. We cannot wait to see which projects get funded and we wanna make this as successful as possible every single year um, so that um, we can fight for even more money. Secondly, bike shops were declared essential services and businesses during the shutdown. We worried that bike shops were gonna to have to close just at the time when biking needs were increasing. We organized more than 70 shops to sign a letter to the governor, urging him to, to say bike shops are essential, which he did. And then um, we all proceeded to empty the shops and the supply chains and then some. Third, more street space is being dedicated to walking and biking. And this is one of the golden mo things of this moment. The, this summer, communities throughout the region launched shared and sh slow streets initiatives. More bike lanes were installed, including our much anticipated Milwaukee Avenue protected bike lane, but our drumbeat must continue for complete streets in action, for more street space dedicated to walking and biking. Last week, we did have another leap forward um, in that Chicago's capital plan included nearly 430 million to improve street safety and comfort. And that includes pedestrian safety islands, traffic calming, bike lanes, more bike parking. Really important stuff. Fourth, we're moving closer to a more seamless regional trail network. We, I feel like this is the hidden gem of our region. We have so many amazing trails, um, but we have major gaps in them and we can't ride seamlessly across them. So we have been working to um, fill the gaps along those networks and have had progress this year in the Chicago River Trail, the Lake Calumet area, Des Plaines River Trail, i &M, Canal Trail, Skokie River Trail, a lot of trails, a lot of work to do, uh, but so many important partners uh, helping us do that. And last but not least, Metro has rolled out a bike car and eased bike restrictions across all their lines. Uh, this pilot um, is in large part thanks to our partner in Ride Illinois and Metra. We um, want to see this be expanded and become permanent. So uh, I encourage you all to get riding and rolling to demonstrate to Metra that bike convenience should be part of their standard offerings. That was a lot in a very short period of time um, and we couldn't have done it without you. There are tens of thousands of you behind this work. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inspiring these actions and investments. Just take a moment to think about what we did together, which is increase the relevance of sustainable transportation in our most pressing times. Um, it's really, really remarkable. At the same time, so much work lies ahead. We're not satisfied, you're not satisfied, we shouldn't be satisfied. Um, but as we look through working through this and emerging from this pandemic, we can do it and emerge with safer and more expansive bicycle networks with more equitable improvements in our infrastructure with more street space dedicated to people and with really bolstering our world class transit. So I think that's actually a perfect way to transition to my colleague W. Robert Schultz III. He's gonna help set up the breakout room discussion, share some of our plans to that end in 2021, explain um, how we're centering our work around health and safety, around racial equity, and around essential travel to essential places, and um, set us up to have really fervent advocacy in the year to come. Thank you all for being here tonight, and I look forward to greater change in 2021. On to you, Robert. Thank you, Peggy and Amy, for the overview of Actatrans' successes of the past year and the challenges of the future. 
Accutrans policy successes in changing guidelines, getting safe street infrastructure installed, and increasing the efficacy of public transit is due in no small part to members responding and acting. Thanks to members acting, change can happen. The small group breakout, which follows my segment, will allow you to explore how. My name is W. Robert Schultz III. I am a campaign organizer, part of the eight member advocacy team at Active Trans. My portfolio is to work with elected officials. The Active Trans advocacy team works to advance walking, biking, and public transit policies with all levels of government and the respective agencies. Your local work, community input, and advocacy is connected to the national, state, local, city, and suburbs work done through Active Trans Advocacy Team. On Tuesday, December the 15th at 6 p.m., the advocacy team will be presenting the third in a series of Transit Justice Talks. The next Transit Justice Talk will be about food access and public transportation. There are invitations out to three local elected officials to participate. Stay tuned to Active Trans social media for announcements as the guests for the evening are confirmed. Our previous transit talks are archived on the Active Trans YouTube page. Active Trans is responding to COVID in three ways. Follow the lead of public health officials, advocating for the prioritization of essential trips and mobility, prioritize racial justice, over the next few months, the COVID-19 response campaign will include advocating for more investment in bus service and transit safety, seeking the build out of walking and biking recovery networks, infrastructure on the streets, not plans on the shelves. Lastly, securing more federal funds for Chicago transit and supporting Metro Electric and Rock Island Fair reduction pilot will be on the agenda. Active Trans will be working with you, mobility activists, around two high-level intermediate and long-term concerns. Supporting the bike walk boom by advocating for infrastructure and policies that respond and anticipate those trends as borne out by antidote and data. The second high level concern is ensuring transit stability, reliability, and financial sustainability through innovations and policies that focus on federal support, safety, dedicated bus lanes, all door boarding, and integration of bike and scooter share. It has been proven the Active Trans, through its members, can be agents of change in their communities, cities, towns, statewide, and at the federal level. Now it's your turn to explore how. Active Trans staff will help facilitate the small breakout discussions on transportation challenges. You will have a chance to explore what resilient investments in multimodal infrastructure might mean for your community while lifting other communities whose resources remain deficient. Finally, you can discuss how to support active trans advocacy at all levels of government. While active tra trans supports you and your work transforming your community. There may be a momentary break while you get assigned to a breakout room. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right, well, it looks like a lot of folks are rejoining us again. So welcome back. 
We just wanted to bring everyone back together again one last time for a quick minute before we say goodnight. We hope that everyone had some great conversations in those breakout rooms. Our staff is really curious to get your feedback. So thanks again for making your voice heard. So don't forget that you can take action right now to make sure that our transportation agencies have the federal support that they need. Visit activetrans.org backslash Congress to make sure that you're able to send that note. Also, a quick reminder to join us at our two upcoming advocacy events, a Chicagoland Rally for Federal Support of Public Transportation it on December 9th and then transit justice talk food access and public transit during COVID-19 uh, COVID on December 15th. In addition to these awesome ways to take action we've got a number of upcoming events coming that we think you're going to enjoy so we've got our winter bike challenge coming up in at the end of January and then um, our first time partnering with the bicycle film fest which will take place at the end of February and then our 35th annual eBash coming up on March 25th and then stay tuned for a very exciting announcement regarding bike the drive 2021 exciting changes afoot there. And then thank you again to our event sponsors, Divi and HNTB. And thanks everyone for being here with us tonight and for your year round support of the movement. We're gonna unmute everyone for a second just so we can all say good night. All right, good night. All right, good night everybody. Thanks for joining. Good night. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Be well. Bye -bye.